Okay, this video is about causes of cognitive decline. So the purpose of this is if you're having cognitive problems yourself or if someone in your family, a friend or a patient, whatever, this might give you some ideas on what might be causing the problem. Um, and so this is what you do. You go through the list of all the potential causes, see if any of them apply to you or the person of interest at that time, and then see if you can, you know, remove them or avoid them or minimize them. And that's your best chance to get better. Because in my experience, the vast majority of people are very simple-minded. They want one answer. Okay, I do this and I get better. It's not like that. In my experience, lots of people with cognitive impairment, they've got 10, 15 things causing cognitive impairment. And they have to be willing to try to fix all 10 or 15 problems if they really want to restore optimal cognitive function. That's just the way it is. There's no magic pill that fixes 15 different problems. Uh, but... It's what you got to do if you want to get better. So anyways, first of all, let's talk about hypertension. I know I've talked about this a lot more in other lectures, but just briefly, with hypertension, you're screwed either way. Pressure's too high, you're stroking the basal ganglia. Pressure's too low, like I just showed in that last lecture. You're at risk for silent strokes in the deep white matter due to hyperperfusion. Okay, so the best thing to do is optimize your diet and your lifestyle so you minimize your hypertensive. You know, McDougal doesn't even treat patients unless they're persistent, persistently systolic hypertension at 150 or higher. So you can watch his videos, you know, talk with your own doc, but um, if you opt minimize your dietary salt, your dietary fat, you'll improve your pressure. And by the way, I hear these people, you know, recommend demented people with cognitive impairment eat these high-fat diets. I think that's insane. High fat increases atherosclerosis, increases insulin resistance, does the opposite, increases blood pressure. It does the opposite of what I want to do to improve perfusion to the brain. Okay, we talked about in my previous lecture, like the, the deletory mouse turning point on dementia, all these things are mouse equivalents in terms of like when they tied off the carotid artery in a mouse, congestive heart failure drops brain perfusion, atrial fibrillation drops brain perfusion, aortic valve regurgitation or stenosis will drop brain perfusion. These are all mouse equivalents. Diabetes. I see diabetes and or hypertension in 95% of the cognitively impaired people. These are the most two important things to avoid because if you avoid those, you'll avoid most of the other problems. So focus on these. Um, also, I see people all worried about some minor disease when they're hypertensive and diabetic, and that's what's going to kill them. So they need to pay attention to these things. We talked about these in other lectures, but basically dietary fats are the main cause of insulin resistance, so you want to minimize your dietary fat in general. Certainly eating a whole food plant-based diet gets it under 10%. Dr. McDougall said if people closely follow his diet, they'll typically end up eating about 7% of fat or less. Esselstyn you know, also has fantastic results, best results of any doctor in the world for prevention of coronary artery disease. His diet puts patients at dietary fat in the ballpark of uh, around 10% or less. Uh, so that's what you want. Um, sleep apnea, people are hypoxic at night once they put a pulse ox on them. So you want to avoid that. And you minimize your body weight by becoming a low-fat vegan. And <clears throat> that'll help uh, quite often with that. Atherosclerosis, especially due to high-fat diet, high-sodium diet. Um, hypothyroidism, there's a whole bunch of things that cause that. So I have separate lectures on that subject. Uh, but that has a trophic effect on the brain. You want to make sure you got adequate vitamin B12, probably a level of like 500. 500 to 1,000 is a good ballpark range to keep it in. Make sure you're getting adequate folate. Folate comes from foliage, from plant foods. Uh, liver failure can also tip people into cognitive impairment. Your liver runs metabolism for the body. So if the liver is damaged, um, that can lead to hepatic encephalopathy. It can be damaged by a lot of things. Excessive dietary fat is by far the most common thing I see. The majority of people over 50 in this country, in my experience, have fatty liver. Uh, drinking alcohol, standard American diet just causes fatty liver. Um, Non-organic herbicides contribute to fatty liver. Uh, alcohol, major cause of fatty liver. Hepatitis B and C will cause liver failure from scarring, fibrosis, inflammation, hemochromatosis, excessive iron absorption, made worse, of course, by eating meat with all the iron. Um, congestive hepatopathy is just uh, back pressure from congestive heart failure causing liver failure. Uh, watch out for heavy metals. I got separate lectures in all these things, but mercury, lead, aluminum, cadmium. Also, excessive amounts of iron with iron overloaded and copper will contribute to increased oxidative stress and cognitive decline with aging. In terms of toxic inhalants, anything that smells bad is bad. You got a nose for a reason. Pay attention to it. Anything that smells bad is bad. A lot of people ignore this. You shouldn't. 
I don't even get my clothes dry cleaned anymore because I hate the smell of walking into one of those places. So I don't care if my shirt's a little wrinkled. No one else cares either anyways. Uh, watch out for working with chemicals. You know, I see a lot of people working with chemicals in a closed room. Stupid. You should always open the door and ventilate and try to avoid working with the chemicals if you can. Sedentary. You lose a trophic effect. Exercise produces BDNF, brain-derived neurotropic growth factor, to cause new neurons to grow and maintain the ones you got. So you need to exercise. It's normal for humans to exercise. So make sure you're at least walking every day. Get out in the sun. Get your vitamin D. Get your vasodilatation. Better blood perfusion in your brain. Okay, watch out for head trauma. Watch out for sending your kid into head trauma. The biggest thing I see in head trauma where people aren't aware of it is soccer. I mean, soccer, I think, is so stupid, hitting the ball with your head. Coach does a corner kick from the corner, and these people are volunteered to get punched in the head with the soccer ball. So bad idea. Unless they, unless they change the league's rules where you don't have to hit the ball with your head, I would say don't let your kid play soccer. Football is a super fun sport, but, you know, it's real dangerous. A lot of head trauma. Same thing with rugby. Um, so boxing, everybody knows that's got a lot of head trauma. MVC, motor vehicle collision, probably the most common, one of the most common causes of head trauma. MCA is what uh, physical medicine and rehab puts in their chart. I didn't know what that was at first, but that means motorcycle accident. Uh, motorcycles are stupid, man. They're just too dangerous. I realize you might have to ride them. Then do them under the safest conditions in the daytime, but be careful. Tons of injuries on those things. Electronic skateboards, this is the latest stupidity. Young guys think they're cool. They think they're immortal, and they go on these electronic skateboards. I've seen terrible comminuted skull fractures into cranial bleeds, you know, leading to patients uh, having to get their skull cracked open, their brains herniating outside the craniotomy site, they're intubated. These are young guys that just basically have, you know, given themselves a stroke and serious brain damage from these stupid electronic skateboards. Stay away from those things. Uh, falls in older people, and usually because they're becoming demented. That's why old people start falling a lot. That's usually the beginning of the end, in my experience, is getting cataract surgeries, then they're falling, and then they're totally demented not too soon. Those things happen in relatively quick succession quite often. Uh, whatever happened in the eyes quite often has happened in the brain. It just takes a little longer to show up in the brain. Okay, um, bacteria, when it's vascular disease, which it usually is. Not always, but what's what it usually is with the eyes leading to the brain. Infections will cause brain damage too. Most common thing in the past certainly was syphilis. All these famous people, Franz Schubert, the composer, Winston Churchill's father, Al Capone, Nietzsche, Oscar Wilde, many others. Uh, Lyme disease uh, made uh, Chris Christopherson demented. He was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, but then they figured out it was Lyme disease. He got treated and he improved. Um, there's parasites that will cause dementia like malaria can lead to that, but you got to watch out. The malaria medications themselves can lead to dementia, cognitive impairment. Surprisingly common and dangerous those things are. Toxoplasmosis, dangerous. You know, I'm not a big fan of cats. That's one of the big reasons. Cysticercosis. Seen that a lot of people if they eat un, you know, inadequately cooked pork. Be careful with that. It's bad. Um, virus infections. You know, West Nile virus will do it. Herpes simplex virus. You know, that that can have flare ups, especially when a person's stressed out. Their cortisol goes up. The virus seems to measure it, no one to reactivate. HIV can cause cognitive impairment. You don't see it as much nowadays. They came up with pretty good medicines for HIV, much better than in the past. Uh, prions, these are all really rare, you know, like Kuru from cannibalism. They used to eat the brain of the deceased one in some of these populations. Crazy. Uh, Jakob Kreutzel disease, really, really rare. Uh, Mad cow, super rare. I mean, how often do I see these things? Once every 10 years. Okay, so they're really rare. Diabetes and hypertension, nonstop all day long. That's what you should be afraid of. Don't worry about eating good fats, okay? I've never seen a person suffer from a fat deficiency. Not a single case. <laughs> Diabetes and hypertension from high-fat diets all day long, every day. Okay, iron overload. We've talked about that in a recent lecture and its association with leaky gut and the whole work of Douglas Kell and Etheresia Pretorius. Yes, it does contribute to making you stupid and demented. So you want to avoid leaky gut. We know how to do that. Avoid iron. We know how to do that. Avoid meat. Avoid uh, iron-fortified grains, etc. Iron-fortified vitamins and pills and stuff. Okay, F- in the water. You need a water filter, like a whole house carbon filter, which doesn't remove F-, minus, but it's a good start. Better yet, have your source water without F-. minus. Get RO in your kitchen filter. Uh, that's uh, worth doing. It costs a bit of money, but it's worth it. Uh, watch out for mold, you know, deal with that. Uh, meningioma as a cause of cognitive impairment. You'll see that in all the books. 
And that's one of the reasons why with a newly demented patient, they'll always get a brain MRI or CT. But how often do I see meningioma as a cause of, of cognitive impairment? Once every five years. It's super rare. It hardly ever is the cause. Uh, primary brain tumor, glioblastoma multiforme, I'll see that more often. Still rare. Brain metastases, that's more common. But most of the time when I see brain mets, I already know the patient's primary malignancy. Most commonly lung cancer, but I've seen it with all kinds of cancers. Breast cancer, colon cancer. MPH, normal pressure hydrocephalus, same thing as communicating hydrocephalus. That's pretty rare too. How often do I see a case there that's the cause and it's successfully treated and the patient dramatically improves? About once a year. It's not that common. Uh, you'll hear some surgeons, I know there's some surgeons say, oh, it's 5%. No, it's not. That's an exaggeration. Um, excessive psychological stress, cardiac effect, ex excitotoxin effect. Yeah, because you're releasing more glutamate at the presynaptic neurons in your hippocampus. Plus, you're, you're going to have increased um, catecholamines causing increased cardiac activation. It can contribute to cardiac failure over decades, okay? Lack of sleep is a stress equivalent. Being socially isolated can lead to cognitive impairment in people. They'll get themselves in the negative cycles of thinking there's no one there to talk them out of it. They can become very depressed or confused in other ways, delusional. Watching too much TV, I mean, that's a sign of a stupid person, somebody who watches a lot of TV. You don't need to watch TV. I haven't watched TV since I was a teenager. It's bad. There's nothing good on TV, okay? It's all, you know, just pro feed, um, you know, maybe if you like a sport, fine, watch your sport. But just if you're spending a lot of time on the TV, you're screwing up, okay? It's not a good place to spend a lot of time. Much better to read books, watch educational videos, have conversations with somebody who's interesting. All those things are very good for your brain. Um, have a purpose in life, and especially some of the best purposes are just to help other people in some way. Religion can be very helpful to people. I've seen that be very helpful to people. When the human mind is focused on a, a, a good, positive purpose, the person just does better overall and becomes more resilient. Okay, just a couple more. This is the last slide. Uh, tobacco, of course, is a disaster. It causes hypoxia. It, it's a disaster. It's a stimulant. It increases neuronal metabolic demand. Dietary excitotoxins. Caffeine is a stress equivalent. MSG, MFG, manufactured glut, free glutamate, aspartame, those are all excitotoxins. Corticosteroid medicines also. These, when I say excitotoxin, I mean they're increasing glutamated synapses. Uh, dietary circa inhibitors, from, especially from processed food. So circa is a sarcoplasm, endoplasmic reticulum, calcium ATPase. And basically, you need your calcium metabolism to function effectively, or you end up with increased cytoplasm calcium and increased neuronal activity. That can predispose towards anxiety, for example. And it can eventually create the metabolic demand in the neuron being so much higher than the uh, delivery of oxygen and glucose that the neuron just goes into apoptosis and dies. Some of these uh, endocrine disrupting chemicals can disrupt circa function, like BPA and canned food. Um, atrazine, the non-organic her, uh, herbicide. Sorry about the dogs. Dairy causes other diseases that can often lead to cognitive impairment. Meat and oils, vasoconstriction from excess dietary sodium. Uh, a lot of uh, substances of abuse like opioids and alcohol will lead to cognitive impairment. And there's also medications that have, you know, significant enough that it's good to be aware of at risk of causing cognitive impairment, and they're listed here. Okay, well, that's it. Hope this was helpful.